Okay, uh, everybody. See, before I provide the answer, what happened? <laughs> you guys were talking away and like, whoa, and then somebody trying to convince, no, misleading, no, this is no, no. Then someone said, no, no, this is the right answer. I feel it's this, I feel it's that, I feel it's this, I feel it's that. So you guys are getting engaged to the topic, right? You guys were investing time. You begin committed, invested time. You want to show that whatever conclusion you got, whatever your answer was, the right one, right? And you had to formulate thinking of your answer and then justify it to your colleague. If your colleague agrees with you, fine. If your colleague doesn't agree with you, it's a challenge. You wanted to say this, you want to say that, right? So engagement is going on. You have to reflect upon your understanding of what happened here. <coughs> you have to structure your internal thoughts and vocalize them, right? You have to do all that stuff in your mind. You're talking, you're thinking, and then you have to tell the people and convince them, hey, this is the right one. No, yes, why, whatever, whatever. Use facts to justify your answers. I could see just now expressions, all that. So you became animated, you became invested, like I said. So isn't that more fun as compared to just talking, me talking, just listen, listen, and you are zoning off somewhere. So you invested emotionally into the learning process. Your emotions are in there. So when your emotions are in there, you would then definitely know the understanding, you remember, okay? And now comes, like I, remember I said just now, you have to have the so-called validation, right? So now you want to know the answer. So it is no longer stage on the stage, but guide from the side. Sampai tanya tadi, is there be a prize? <laughs> right? Because you wanted to know the answer. So validation is also important. I'm not saying that lecturer is not important. The person teaching the information is not important. No. Person is there to validate. Because remember, you are the so-called expert, and they are learning that idea. This is just a simple example. It can be any topic that you choose. Okay, whatever topic you choose, go on from there. Now I give the explanation. Now this is where the data comes in. <laughs> okay, so dehydration causes the load pods to shrink. Different thickness around the seam, go on and on and on. And if you look at it, there's three here. So for each of the seam here, there are two connecting points. So the critical moment, the very fast, the final split occurs when simultaneous is in all six connecting points. And the seam, the lobe split open, the virtue of the seam being connected to the inner wall, the seam is flung outwards. Just like you hold something, you throw, right? You stop your hand, your hand doesn't continue, but the momentum and the mass for the object still continues. So you can use it for biology, you can use it for physics, you can do whatever. And I got this, uh, because I was walking, I was, during weekends I like to hike through the forest, one way of getting rid of my stress. So I hear all these rubber seeds exploding and trying to figure out, hmm, why? Okay. So, Some of you look disappointed, like, oh. Some of you say, nah, right? But, but, but it doesn't say, it says the final speed occurred. But why, why did it occur? <laughs> because as it shrinks, it gets dry. The structural stress between the seams need to break it open. <laughs> Split. <laughs> Not the water vapor or anything like that. So. Yes. So, uh, example like this demonstration, uh, it's not so much about getting the right answer. The right answer right? But the process towards getting the right answer that provoke uh, big talk and also uh, 
question. Yes, deep learning happens. Okay, thank you for the summary there. But that's what's happened. Just like if I were to say from here, you guys can go, uh, I need you all to go to, let's say, Bukit Jambul shopping complex. Is there one right path to get there? You guys can take so many roads, right? So in a learning situation, you provide the question. The answer is already known, but the process is where you guys get involved. And that's how, what's happening in the real world. You do not have to follow a single path. You can take so many roads to get to Bukit Jambul shopping complex. So the question is known. The answer is known because it's the goal, your learning outcomes. But the process is unknown. The solution to get there is unknown. And that's where we allow you, we should allow whoever the learner is, that's how you nurture them, to pick themselves. And they discuss among their groups. Because in the real world, people work in groups, collaboratively, not individual. Okay? So that's the important thing. The answer is nice to have. Okay? But the process of you getting it, you guys, like I said just now, were engaged, were involved, thinking about this, thinking about that, justifying, non-justifying, and blah, blah, blah. But you still needed to be validated. You wanted to see which is the right answer. And then that's why some, when it's shown, uh, you know, no, disagree. So you can do your own research after this. You have all the technology. You can do Google it. You can do research. Whatever you want to do, Bing, or whatever you want to use. So remember, we want to avoid this. So if you talk about flipped classroom, you talk about the bring your own devices, you talk about engaged learning, active learning, all that is going on. Peer collaboration, project based. That's how most of us will always have some kind of project for the students to do, right? And they feel, I feel that they get more, um, more out of it rather than just plain lecture. Right. Anyway, these are some of my ideas, whether you agree or don't agree. So for more information, you can contact me. Engaged learning is part of peer instruction. Okay, there's many other things about peer instruction that, uh, we can talk about. And it was developed and propagated and now popularized by Prof. Eric Mazu, School of Engineering and Applied Science, Harvard. That's his email. That's mine if you have more questions about it. So I was very fortunate that I was able to be in his group. And the things he does is, wow, you know, just fantastic. I mean, I learned a lot from him. And uh, so I'm glad that I was able to be with him. And his class is constantly being um, visited by professors all over the world. Every week, he will get about 17 requests from all over the world to visit and see, observe his classroom. And there's always, in, any, in his classroom, there's only one table, at least six or seven people from every university. There's MIT, there's me, there's Boston, there's from China, from Europe, South America. And in one year, he would go to maybe about um, 40, 50 countries. Every week, I ask him, where are you now? <laughs> He'll be at some other country presenting his ideas. He's been invited so many times. So they. You want to get to know about it? Even if you do a Google it, see if I, it works here. You Google peer instruction. His name comes up first. Imagine that. This is Google. So peer instruction, the Mazu group. He has his own research group. He calls it Mazu group, and. Another one which is, uh, which is done by Julie Shell, like I said, is Turn to Your Neighbor. Like I said, when I first tried to come up with the title of this talk, I wanted to say Turn to Your Neighbor, but I can't, because this is already taken up by somebody else. So that, we need to talk. Nah, it didn't work, so I said, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. And you guys were talking among yourselves. Let's see now. Where am I? Here, here. I think this one, right? Oh, oh yeah, I wanted you all to help me also. You want to take a break now or continue? You want to take a break? 
<laughs> it's a group work. Continue. continue. Okay, so if you guys want to continue, I will need a bit of help here. Uh, see if I can find it. Okay, <coughs> research has shown that most of us tend to concentrate for periods of 20 minutes. More than that, if it's kind of, you guys start to drift off already. So my request from you guys is, most of you have your devices here, right? Okay, those of you who have your devices here, can you set a 20 minute alarm so that you guys can tell me, all right, 20 minutes is up, so then I can stop for a selingan, for a short break, so that we can talk about this. And one of the things which I loved when I was uh, studying it was this thing. It was a program called Things That Made You Go Hmm by Arsenio Hall. And it was in the 80s, it was done. Uh, so simple one would be, why do 7-Eleven have locks on their door? It's open 24 hours. It, right, open all the time, seven days a week. So why do they have locks on their door? Hmm. See? So these are the questions which sometimes I ask myself like, why do they have locks? If the number two pencil is the most popular, why is it still number two? Not the number one. Like I said, this is a selingan. It is no real answer, but something to make you think. Hmm. Is there another word for synonym? What's the synonym for synonym? Okay, I see some of you trying out with trying to find it. So if a turtle has no shell, is it naked or is it homeless? <laughs> See? So, okay, peer instruction. So how do we do assessment in peer instruction? Because we're going to do it by group, right? You guys are going to do, so do you guys allow exams to be done by groups? Quizzes maybe, projects maybe, but final exam, what we do? Sit down in a row, sit there, you walk by, you check the IC. Exam slip, the number must be there. This is not your slip. Tawri do sini, out. Right. There are times when I see people, especially for ladies and tudong, you know, cover everything. You get a female investigator, check, is she who she is supposed to be? Because I can't see, I only see the eyes. So our exams are so very, very formal. You cannot talk, keep quiet. You cannot even just look, you're copying. Then a jawatan kuasa and all kinds of stuff, right? So now, if you're doing peer instruction, which encourages you to, to talk to them on themselves and blah, blah, how do you do assessment? How do you do evaluation? How do you do exams? This is what I'm gonna try and do now. With you guys, do another experiment. Okay? You guys ready for this? So, this is the conceptual flow on it. Basically, you're presented with a question, like I said, just now the rubber seat thingy. That was a, just a mukadima, all right? You guys already seen it? Think about it, and then you do an answer. Present the answer through a poll. I wanted to try a thing called poll everywhere today, but since I didn't set it up as well as I could, I'm just going to do it by a show of hands later. And then discuss with your group an answer. Okay, this is, I'm talking about doing an exam now. How do we do this? Okay, the method I saw and I learned how to do is, you're given the exam question, you are then asked to answer the question by yourself. First, and then you submit your answer. Next, you discuss among your group, and then you submit your answer again but it's a group consensus answer. 
So the formula was half of the grade that you get for the exam is individual work. The other half is done by group work. And if you do the group work, you allow multiple times to answer it. Okay? So that the best you can do is if you do want to do with your group, you get 50% of the grade. So instead of 100 marks, you get 50. That's it. You won't get anything else. But if you do your group, you get 50%. Let's say you got the right answer. And then with your group, you convince them that is the right answer, you get another 50%. So you get full marks, right? That's where the process of learning happens. You have to convince your friends you had the right answer. If your friends disagree, ah, that's when you guys argue. Lah. Discuss this, discuss that, oh, no, 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 this, blah, 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 and then you resubmit. When you submit the group answer, you get immediate feedback whether it's right or wrong. That's how you know whether your individual answer was correct or wrong. And nobody else knows, except for you. Right? You follow me? You don't follow me? OK? So discuss your group and answer. We do a repoll, so find out which is the right answer. And then only the instructor comes in, validation, explain. Why is it this? Why is it that? Why was the answer? Okay, this is the process flow. So, when you do exams, tests, quizzes, and so on and so forth, you have to worry about group dynamics. You worry about collaborative. Smarter, weaker, collaborate, and it's a 50-50 situation. So group work comes in. Group dynamics. You know there'll be in some groups, there'll be some very <coughs> leadership quality, right? This is the answer, you follow me, whether you agree or not. So eh, some, yeah, okay, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it. So you can do simple group dynamics personality tests. And then you group them in different ways. I'm doing that now with my video production crew. Yes? What happens if the group answer is wrong? Group answer is wrong, you get a negative. You get a penalty, but you're allowed to answer again. So by the time you answer three times, you definitely will get the right answer, right? Because you run out of marks, yeah. So that's why now, if you are a so-called uh, a person who knows the answer very well, you have to convince the rest of the group why your answer is correct. And not by violent, <laughs> you know, but through the discussion of the facts. And to, so that discussion goes on. That's how you do peer instruction assessment. Because the learning is an important thing. Like I said just now, there's no right way to go get jumbled. Everyone has his own path. So the process of that person convincing the rest of the group to follow the answer. That's the process. That's all the uh, peer instruction. So it's a 50-50, smarter, weaker, whatever. So this is half of your grade is done individually. Half the, by group work, numerous tries with penalty. Study uh, Professor Sun's question. A question is a value of 10. This is an example. When it's done individually, you get 50% of that 10 marks. If you get the right answer right. So if you get the answer wrong, but the group work, you get 50%. Right? Because you do on group work, you still get 50%. So if you have 10 questions, because we want you to learn, not because you got 70%, 80%, whatever of the total exam marks. Learning is the important thing. That means now, so if you had the wrong answer, you already submitted the wrong answer, right? You get zero value. But when discussing with the group, you still can get 50%. So nobody flunks. And it's a group work. So maybe the first time you did it, you're not sure your grades may not be that good. But the second exam, third exam, third quiz, whatever, definitely most of you will get maybe close to 100%. Right. And when you get 100% or close to it, it's only because you guys have to discuss. You have to convince that person you had the right answer. 
based on facts, based on figures, based on calculations, based on understanding of concepts. So that's where it's very important. That's why it's called peer instruction. It's no longer me telling you. You guys are talking among yourselves. That's why we said we were, the assumption was we give you something to read, you read it before coming to class. But what happens is that they read afterwards. Huh? Any other questions on this? What's the best number, the right number in the group? Usually we have about five or six. Bigger than that, there'll be hanger-ons and those who, but difficult even if we hanger-ons, you know. Because hanger-ons, that means the best they can do is 50%. They only, they are so dependent on the group, they get only 50% of their marks. So they still have to study how to get there. How do you deal with strong, strong characters in the group? I changed my group throughout the semester. First project, A, B, C, D, you, let's say three of you, one row. Next project, I go diagonal block. You guys, three. And go on from there. That's one method. The other method is uh, we can do personality tests, which I've also done, where we use learning styles and learning personalities. I'm sure some of you have been in groups where a person doesn't mind giving a presentation. The oral presentation, no problem, but his writing. And some say, okay, I do my writing. Tapi, you, you lah pergi depan, you, you present, you present. <coughs> right? So you try to combine these type of people. Someone who is good in presenting, someone who is good in writing, someone who is good in research. So there are many personality tests out there you can look. So that's where group dynamics come in. Okay? And as you walk around, you are the instructor. You've been around for so long, you know what to do. You see someone too dominant, next group you change the person to a different group. Because what you try to avoid, of course, is three or four dominant personalities in one group. Nothing gets done. But still, they have, can get 50% of their marks. Right? Because the group, they cannot just think, and because the group has penalty, you can then decide. Because you, okay, my question was when the experience I got when I was observing is this person is so confident that his answer was correct convinced the rest of the group the answer was correct, and then when the results came out, the answer was wrong. Two things happen. One, your self-confidence, self-efficacy, like, uh, I'm not sure. Second, the rest of the group is, next time he says, nak percaya tak? So these two things happen, which is also another interesting thing. Like I said, when I was in the Mazur group, he had one class. He was doing like maybe 20, 30 different experiments at the same time. Different research there. Group dynamics, uh, collective intelligence. He was doing, um, besides group dynamics also, he was talking about learning catalytics, analyzing all the data which is coming in. And of course, through peer instruction. So all this is going on. Um, well, that one is another time for a lecture, I guess, another class or another present. Yes, sir. Okay, if, uh, if it's pairs, it may work, but I feel a bigger group will be better. Because if it's just pair, then it's just the two of you only, right? So it could be one person weaker, one person more dominant, or it could be just that you don't, you don't have enough, I feel you don't have enough discussion, just the two of you. I'd rather put in a group of four or fives. I tried a group of 10, it was useless. There is, okay, to do this, the Mazu group did was a peer evaluation. Okay, groups of fours, fives. The peer evaluation, which is very interesting to me, is that each of them have to, the peer evaluation, you have to reach a point of zero. And like, huh? You know, when Eric was telling me about it, and what do you mean point of zero? Okay, five of you. You have then to evaluate each other. If you feel that you did not do contribute as much, you have to put a minus one to yourself. The person did more, plus two. So you balance, it comes up to well, minus one and two, eh, one, okay, sorry. Minus one and one. 
value zero, right? So if there's five of them, they have to evaluate themselves. So they have to be very honest in their evaluation. If they cannot get a value of zero, that peer evaluation grade is not given to them. So if you are able to make sure that each person contributes equally, then you get a value of zero. In peer evaluation, if the students are not mature enough, mm -hmm. You're, you're correct about that. It depends a lot on the integrity, the moral ethics of that group. So the mechanism that I, I said I was exposed to, I find it to be working very well. But that may be because it was Harvard students. I don't know. That's why I wanted to try out these things here in Malaysia <coughs> because I'm part of that group now so that then I can say, because that was a very common question for any visitor coming in. This works because it's Harvard students. This works because of MIT students. Does it work in high school? Does it work with weaker students? Does it work in other students? So that's why Ari is going around all over the world, and we are all experimenting, doing many things on it. So yes? Um, I've done the evaluation in my class as a project, and I think the tendency is, no, no, I think the tendency is for students to give high marks, or at least more than average marks for the It's a matter of, I think, Good point. So culture. culture could be, or you just worry, that, or you just gang up and say, okay, everybody give everybody good marks. We definitely will get the extra points. All right? So this is things that the question from the gentleman at the back there was integrity, the honesty. So the closest I can come to what I said was when I looked at it was the value of zero. To get the value of zero. So you guys have to be really honest. If not, somebody gets minus points. Okay, you guys willing to try it out? Or you're <laughs> oh, you guys want a break? Okay, let's try a <laughs> let's try a break. After a break, we'll continue with this. Okay? All right. Thank you very much. We'll take a break now. <laughs>